You know, uh, Wayne Newton wrote that great basketball song, Dunk a Shade. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Hi, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien along with Mike Francesa. Hi, Mike. Welcome to CBS Sports continuing exclusive coverage of the 1991 NCAA Championship Tournament. Tonight, we tip off the regional semifinals with action in the West and the Southeast. Coming up in just a few minutes, we'll send you out to the Kingdom where Seton Hall is getting set to square off against Arizona. Chris Mills, a sophomore from Los Angeles, has put some claws in the Wildcats attack. Mills helped Arizona maul its way to the Pac-10 title. Meantime, the main man for the Pirates is Anthony Avent. The senior from Newark is the sole survivor of the 1989 Cinderella Seton Hall squad that came within a foul shot of winning the national title. As a matter of fact, it was right there in the kingdom. And Mike, what a great time this is, huh? The Sweet 16. And form is held, Pat. You know, 13 of the top 16 seeds have made it to the regional. I hear people saying, hey, you have to look hard and, and wide to find the Cinderella. But with UNLV in the field, everybody else is a Cinderella this season. You're right about that. One game, uh, Mike, already in progress this evening. Down in Charlotte, the first Southeast regional semifinal game featuring Alabama and Arkansas. Right now, it's a close game. 20 to 18 Arkansas lead. The story here, though, is that the big O, Oliver Miller, has four points, four rebounds, but two fouls. Todd Day, before we watched him, he was practicing with a heating pad on his back, Mike. And here you see him split two defenders and deftly put the ball up over Robert Yori, who was looking for the block. When you look at it, Day has six points. He's off well, and he doesn't look to have any problems with his back right now. And we looked at that replay. That wasn't traveling. Not a travel. Yeah, okay. We'll check in on that contest a little later on. And looking ahead to our double header games, uh, Mike, Kansas will take on Indiana in the southeast while Utah will challenge UNLV, the top guns out west. And Rick Majera said uh, they get to play Vegas. I don't think anybody gets to play Vegas. You know, I talked to Rick the other day, and I said, Rick, listen, you won 30 games. You got to the Sweet 16. Who cares if you can't beat UNLV? And he said to me, listen, I'll tell you what. If I beat UNLV, I want your job. I said, no, Rick, if you beat UNLV, you can have Billy Packer's job. <laughs> well, he's already got his hair. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Big night of basketball, and we'll start your primetime viewing with Seton Hall in Arizona. Our men Dick Stockton and Billy Cunningham will have that action for you as the road to the Final Four rolls on from right there, the Kingdom in Seattle, right after a commercial. Stay with us. And welcome to the Kingdom in Seattle, Washington for the West Regional Semifinals. And a game that promises to be one of the best of the Sweet 16, the Seton Hall Pirates of the Big East against the Arizona Wildcats representing the Pac-10. And this is indeed a mini Final Four. The winner of this game will take on the survivor, a powerful UNLV, the defending national champions, and Utah Saturday in the regional final. And good evening, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton, along with Bill Cunningham. And of course, to an extent, the battle lines have been drawn here. Arizona with a deep and formidable front line, very strong. Seton Hall's strength is in the backcourt, scoring with their guards. Bill, what do you think is the key to this game? Well, the buzzword for both teams is defense. They excel at that. But the key to the game and the winner of this game will be the team that executes the half-court offense the best. And when you talk about a player on each side who could execute the half-court offense, who would that be? Well, on Seton Hall, you have Terry DeHare. This young man can go to the outside, hit the three-pointer, take it to the basket, and when he gets to the open court, he's outstanding. That's why I think Seton Hall has the edge of the guard position. Now, Arizona, Brian Williams, 6'11". This young man runs the court as well as any big man in the country. He can go outside, shoot the ball. He can take it inside. That's why Arizona has the edge with the front court. All right, and right now, let's go to the third member of our team. Here's Leslie Visser. Leslie? Dick, P.J. Carlissimo said the tone for this game will be set early in the first four minutes. For Seton Hall, that means physical Big East basketball. Look for him to go to his bench early to replace our turn Carnishivis with six foot seven Jerry Walker to put a big body, a more physical presence on Brian Williams. One note from Arizona, freshman guard Khalid Reeves cracked the finger in his left hand on Monday in practice. He can't do any more damage, but he'll have to have it taken care of after the season. So coming up in a moment, we'll be back with the tip-off of Arizona Seton Hall with Dick and Billy. Toyota presents the Fairy Godmother. Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham getting set to go in this first Western Regional here at the King Dome in Seattle. And the lineups for the game, Winchester, Karnishevis, Avent, Taylor, and DeHare for Seton Hall, Mills, Rooks, Williams, Othick, and Muehlbach for Arizona. P.J. Carlissimo coaching Seton Hall and Lou Olson for Arizona both have been to the Final Four. The officials working this semifinal matchup 
from Havertown, Pennsylvania, Jerry Donaghy, Terry Ted Hillary from Grand Rapids, Michigan, and Andre Patello of Decatur, Georgia, working this game. Seton Hall coming in with a record of 24 and 8, and Arizona 26 and 6. And both teams have been hot. The Pirates have won 11 of their last 12, Arizona 8 of their last 9 games. Both teams play man-to-man -man defense. They both like to get the ball inside to their big people. The advantage there goes to Arizona. The thing that we have to watch for is how effective is the defensive pressure by Taylor and DeHair against the Arizona guards. One of them, Optic, with the ball now. Arizona in white, Seton Hall in blue. Taylor all over him. They get it into Mills, and the Wildcats take the first lead. Oliver Taylor is the point guard. And Taylor will miss a three. Batted out of bounds, and it's still Pirates ball. Now, the big strength for Seton Hall on the inside is Avent. They want to get him the basketball, but they feel that Arizona will double-team him. So it's going to be very important for him to read the situation and swing the basketball. Missing from outside is De Hare, but it comes back in the hands of Carnicevis and Seton Hall, and they set up again. You just can't allow that to happen, especially when you have a front line the size of Arizona's. You're supposed to dominate the defense boards. Gordon Winchester way out to De Hare, double team for the moment. And we'll have the first foul of the game as Anthony Avent in the low post is fouled by Matt Optic. Arizona defeated St. Francis of Loretto, Pennsylvania and Brigham Young in the first two rounds to get here and Seton Hall vanquished Pepperdine and Creighton. And we're not really tested in either game. Terry DeHare, this is from the side. That was a three-point attempt and now the Wildcats Seems like a long time since they've had the ball, and Optic goes up, and he's fouled in the act of shooting. Lute Olsen, dapper Lute Olsen, in his seventh straight NCAA championship. Arizona boasted the nation's best home court winning streak, 64 and still going, and his opposite number. Oliver Taylor committed the foul for Seton Hall. Billy, I think the floor is slippery. It wasn't practice, and I just saw Ate slip a little bit at the top of the key. Well, you, you would hate to see a game this important be decided by a slippery floor. You, I, I think the NCAA took care of it yesterday. We saw UNLV practice, and they were slipping all over the place, so you'd have to assume that they came out and scraped that wax off. UNLV, by the way, the only team that did go through a full bracket. Arturis Karnishevis committing the foul, and that is the second team foul against the Pirates. Now, if Karnishevis cannot handle Brian Williams, we'll see Walker coming off the bench very quickly for Seton Hall. Sean Rooks, one of the big men inside, misses, but Mills gets the offensive rebound, and Williams puts it in. Brian Williams, second leading scorer for Arizona. Well, Lou Dolson has to be ecstatic on that one play because one knock against Arizona is that they're soft, they're not an aggressive team, but on that play, all three big people hit the offensive boards. Carnificent goes by Williams, runs into Othic, and misses. Seton Hall now is 0 for 4. Here is Anthony Avent, and the Pirates 0 for 5 will give up the ball, but three of them have been three-point attempts so far. Looks like Seton Hall's a little nervous starting out this game. They're rushing their shots. No one of all the shots taken, nothing has been close. This is a team that got to the championship game. As Leslie mentioned a couple of years ago on this floor, losing to Michigan in double uh, in overtime, but uh, a different cast of characters for the most part. And last year, he, he, you're exactly right, in a young ball club and some a team that will get better in the years. We got a pretty solid recruiting class. Well. And Ryan Williams. Well, so far, the, the offense of, the, in, of, of uh, Arizona on the inside is dominating this game. Karnishevis misses. Seton Hall still has not really come close. They are 0 for 6 from the field to start out. Now, this is the offense they worked on all day yesterday, sealing the man on the low post when he's fronted. Brian Williams finishes it off. And Jerry Walker 
who figures to play a lot coming off the bench. Physical presence, 6'7", sophomore from Jersey City, has come in, replacing Karnishevis. Well, so far, we're seeing the execution offensively of Arizona, getting the ball where they want to. Seton Hall, if they're going to have to, uh, going to have any success, are going to have to be disruptive out there. Chris Mills. It's the jump shot, the transfer from Kentucky. Two transfers are on this Arizona team. Williams from Maryland and Chris Mills from Kentucky. And it's now eight to nothing. Gordon Winchester finally gets Seton Hall on the board after missing their first six shots. Williams tries to get it in. It's batted in the air by Walker. Yulebach is 24, off at 12. Experienced backcourt, knocked away from Williams. Pesky Seton Hall defense. Great mark of the Big East. And they're going to call Gordon Winchester with the foul that is his first foul and the third team foul against Seton Hall. Now what Arizona is trying to do is get it into the low post. Seton Hall is getting around in fronting, so what they do is they flash from the weak side. Either Rooks or Williams will come to the ball, and they'll look for the law pass, as we saw with Brian Williams getting that dunk shot. Sean Rooks leaves the game, and Ed Stokes, a seven-foot sophomore from Los Angeles, who's a better post defender than Rooks, but not effective offensively. Nonetheless, he not misses. Williams out battles Walker for the loose ball, and a two-on-one break for Seton Hall and Terry DeHair with the layup. Hung on the rim a little bit because they had Arizona players underneath, and now it's a four-point game. Four minutes gone by, first half. And the Wildcats turn it over, and that's giving Seton Hall a little bit of an open door to get back early in this game. The regional semifinals continue coming up next. UNLV against Utah. The Rebels with a 43-game winning streak on the line and Kansas against Indiana in the southeast Bob Knight and Roy Williams two of the great traditional basketball powers Terry DeHair working against Mulebach that'll be a good matchup Avent goes in and he is fouled and Seton Hall was looking for the basket oh look at me you got your wrong guy you want the basket baby all right Matt Othick picking up his second personal foul and we're going to have Another key reserve. We knew Walker would come in early, and Khalid Reeves, a 6'1 freshman from Queens, New York, and as Leslie mentioned, uh, nursing a cracked finger on his left hand. I spoke to him before the game, and his big concern was his ball handling, having that ball in his left hand. Now, what he brings to the table when he comes in the ball game for Arizona is penetration. The other two guards don't have that in their repertoire. So we can look for him penetrating, creating shots for himself and his teammates. He is averaging nine a game, but he has been the leading scorer for the Wildcats in the last five games, averaging about 17. So he has come on strong when they needed him late in the year. It's a matter of adjusting, understanding Lou Olson's program. Now he's comfortable. He's not a freshman any longer. Seton Hall has run off five in a row after Arizona scored the first eight points of the game. Reeves controlling number three. Winchester is guarding Mills. The hair is on Mulebach, and the man-to-man -man slapped away by Jerry Walker. Loses control. And now Arizona takes over. Walker made a good play, but Seton Hall couldn't control it at the other end. Uh, that's why guards are told to keep the ball as long as they can and give it to the big people just for the layup. Maybe one dribble. Falling down for the moment is Mulebach. Mills misses a three. Avent, and it's DeHare, the guard inside, who gets the loose ball. So now Seton Hall can narrow the gap again with that much time remaining in the first half. DeHare, a hard pass, but it was last touched by Muehlbach. Coming back in the game for Arizona is their starting center, Sean Rooks. And they're going to send uh, Brian Williams out of the game. So Rooks and Stokes, 6'10 and 7 foot in there with Mills. And Brian Caver, a freshman guard from Trenton, New Jersey, will replace Terry DeHair. He's gone out with two points. Lou Olson 
has that luxury of having four very good big people. And he can rotate them. Now, Anthony Avent, he's going to have to play the whole ball game for the Seton Hall to have any chance in this game. Will he, will he fatigue as the game goes on? He's defended well by Stokes, and that's the strength. Now, Arizona with a 3 on 2 advantage. Milbach misses inside, and I believe it was Avent who got a piece of that ball. Quickly, as the tempo picks up, Walker lays it in, and it's now 8-7. to seven. You see the difference? The guard gave the ball to Walker where he just had to catch it and lay it in the basket and not have to put it on the floor. Arizona scored the first eight. Seton Hall's come back to score the next seven. Reeves goes right around Oliver Taylor and draws the foul. Terrific penetration by the freshman from Queens, New York. That's his strength. That's what he can do. He can just go create. That we've heard so much since we've been here in Seattle concerning the perimeter shooting of their, their guards. But if you look closely, Muehlbach and Reeves led the Pac-10 in three-point accuracy. Arturis Karnishevis returns to the game, and Gordon Winchester, who's just picked up his second personal, leaves the game. So P.J. Carlissimo has to juggle his front court men to avoid foul trouble as well. Brian Williams, after a brief respite, returns to the game, and Ed Stokes goes to the bench. But he's given him some pretty good post defense thus far, I think. Halftime, Arkansas leading Alabama by three, 40 to 37 in the Southeast region. Terry DeHare back in the game DeHare who has scored 26 and 28 points in the first two games of this tournament has been strictly spectacular as checked back in so the free throw by Reeves ended a 7-0 run we're seeing a lot of substitutions built, but just for short periods of time. Well, when you have young kids out here playing basketball, the game meaning so much, the emotion involved in the game, I think they, 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 they want to get them a little breather, relax a little bit, and get out there and start playing the way they're capable of. Try to go into Walker against the double team. In trouble against three defenders. Lost the ball, and now they're going to call Arizona with the foul. The Wildcats don't agree with that. Ball by the official. And it's Matt Muehlbach with his first personal foul. He is the only senior in the starting lineup and the only senior on the Arizona squad. 50, 50. Out of bounds underneath, we'll see. Arizona goes to that zone defense. 9-7 the score. Arizona can tie it up, but Walker... He got a good pass from Karnishevis, couldn't hold it. The walk is looking to do too much with the basketball before he catches it. He's looking to score. Just catch it, then take it up to the basket. And I think that's just a little sign of the nerves and you know, the tension in this type of ball game. Meanwhile, the Wildcats have gone nearly four minutes without a basket. Leading by two. Muehlbach, good bounce pass into Rooks. Perfect play, and Rooks with his first point. Walker gets it in low to Avent. Here at the King Dome in Seattle. First half of the Seton Hall, Arizona, Western Regional Semifinal. And Arizona scored the first eight points of this game, now leading by two, 11-9 after a Seton Hall spurt. Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham, Arizona in the white uniform. Brooks kind of rushed that shot, Avent the rebound, and Seton Hall looking to tie the game. So far, it's been a game where it appears that both teams are trying to feel each other out, what they can do. So far, we've seen Arizona looking to go inside every time. There's only two points that have been scored by the guards of Arizona, and that's Reeves. And uh, so far, uh, Seton Hall has not been able to establish a real good inside game against Arizona. Avent trying to draw the foul or get him to the basket, and it finally bounces in for him, and five points for Anthony Avent. Bill, how do you think Arizona's front line is doing in what is now a tie game? Doing a good job. They're battling in there. They're playing. You know, we've heard so much about them being a little soft, but they've been very aggressive going to both courts. Mills in the crowd has several defenders in his face. Rebound in the hands of Avent. 
Seton Hall looking to take their first lead of the game after trailing 8 to nothing early on. Karnishevis for three. He's got it. And the Hall is up by three, and that's the first three-point hoop of the game. Arturis Karnishevis from Vilnius, Lithuania. No basket. No basket. But a foul is committed against Seton Hall, and that will be their 15th foul. One of the things that Seton Hall wanted to do defensively against the guards no, they wanted to put pressure and force Mulbach and Athik to put it on the floor. Well, hey ben, by the way. Arizona's first two games were in Salt Lake City and they disposed of St. Francis of Pennsylvania and Brigham Young. Mulbach and Reeves in the backcourt. Stokes. And Wayne Womack, junior forward from Pasadena, California, has come in the game. Reeves misses. Williams gets the gimme. Oh, just great hustle by Womack to keep that ball alive and allow Williams to dunk it. Going low to Abent. And Anthony Abent now has seven points. He comes into this game as the second leading scorer for Seton Hall. You just can't allow an offensive player like Avent to catch the ball that low in the post. Mulbach. Very tight defense by Seton Hall. Williams with a turnaround. And the re rebound by Womack, and we'll have a Seton Hall foul. There's six. Here at the Kingdom in Seattle, the Western Regional Semifinal after First falling behind 8 nothing, Seton Hall leading 16 to 13. And Asaf Barnea, a 6'8 freshman from Haifa, Israel, has come into the game for Seton Hall. As the Pirates will need all the bangers they need, Anthony Avan will sit down with two personal fouls. And one of the keys, of course, for P.J. Carlissimo, Bill, is to keep Avan out of foul trouble. That could really hurt Seton Hall in a big way. What it does is they don't have a real offensive threat in the low post now. More responsibility offensively will fall upon the shoulders, especially DeHare, to create and score some points for Seton Hall. There is Avan. And let's see what Seton Hall does without their big man in the middle. Womack hits the first free throw. Jerry Walker came into the game. Seton Hall played its first two games in Tucson and disposed of Pepperdine by 20 points and Creighton by 12. Seton Hall getting to the Sweet 16 for the second time in the last three years. One free throw by Womack, and it's a two-point pirate lead. Now we're going to have to see does the hair step forward offensively? Because he's the key now with Avent sitting on the bench. And who does the rebounding for Seton Hall is another question. Oliver Taylor oh! inside the rebound by Womack. So with Stokes and Womack, Arizona has their better defenders and rebounders in there right now. Steps on the line and turns it over. Well, Taylor learned. You know, twice he was beaten to the basket by Reeves. This time, he moved his feet and beat him to the spot, forcing the turnover. Seton Hall, with Taylor the point guard, DeHare the other guard, Barnea and Karnishevis, two of the international flavor players on the Seton Hall team, and Jerry Walker. Driving in is Taylor, has it batted down by Williams. And releasing down court is Muehlbach. He's got DeHare in front of him, and they're going to call the foul, I believe, against Terry DeHare. Now, watch Brian Williams coming from the weak side. What a play. Just waited for it, blocked the shot. They're able to recover. Here he is. He sees the play the whole way. Taylor had no chance. So the formidable front line is making his presence felt. The foul was on Barnea of Seton Hall and the 17th foul. Mulebach, 78% free throw shooter. Now here's Taylor beating Reeves to the spot, but Dick, you see that floor again? It still seems slippery in spots. I wonder what Park will say about that because he was complaining about it yesterday when UNLV practiced. 
One free throw from Yulbach. Seton Hall by one. Seton Hall have to have even more patience offensively with they've been on the floor. See the patience they had? <laughs> <laughs> the hair drew the foul by Muehlbach. Yeah. <laughs> Just out of your mouth, they put the shot up. And Matt Muehlbach has collected his second personal foul. And only the fourth team foul against Arizona. Number 12. Matt Opping, who went out with two fouls earlier, will give Muehlbach a rest. And DeHair is on the line. Now Reeves is going to have to move over to the off-guard position or the shooting guard position. It just tells you something about this young man's ability and his intelligence as a basketball player, being able to go from a lead guard to an off-guard. Now his responsibilities are more to be offensive-minded. De Hare, who was fouled while shooting a three, is shooting three free throws here. Sean Rooks replaces Ed Stokes. Rooks, the more offensive-minded of the two big men, and now Terry DeHare can give Seton Hall his biggest lead with 9-14 remaining in the first half. Well, so far, this game has been everything we thought it would be in regards to the powerful in the front line of uh, Arizona being the offensive threat. And DeHare, he has stepped forward right now, and he's got to even take more charge of the offensive end of the court for Seton Hall. Five points for DeHare. Abent on the bench has seven to lead Seton Hall. Using a screen of Williams and a fine shot by Othick, who came in averaging nearly eight points a game, gets his first basket. And driving in and drawing the foul is Arturis Karnishevis. Now here's Othick driving to the basket. That's what Seton Hall wants to do, force him to do. But they don't expect him to do this. Well, we've been talking about the floor. Leslie Visser has been talking to Jerry Tarkanian. What did he tell you, Leslie? Dick, Jerry Tarkanian is concerned about the floor. He said it doesn't appear to be as bad as it was yesterday, but he complained to the officials, and he hopes they took care of it. He will be off and off the bench and screaming and yelling if it does affect his team. We have seen a couple of instances so far in this first half where it's had enough. Well, what happens to the players is they become tentative thinking that boy I just better not go all out because I might trip and fall I might just tip have to tiptoe around the basketball court good overplay and a steal by Rooks by the way the previous foul was against Karnishevis which is why Womack went to the line he throws up a wild shot that went nowhere well there was a play Womack going to the basket should have made sure that he would get to the foul line and draw that contact. He had two Seton Hall players around him, but he tried a dipsy doodle and lost possession. Karnishevis goes out, Winchester back for Seton Hall, and Chris Mills comes in for Womack for Arizona. So Brian Kaber, along with the hair in the backcourt, Walker and Anthony Avent is playing with two personals up front with Winchester for Seton Hall, leading 19 to 17. And Reeves inside, and that'll be only the 15 foul against Arizona and the first against Khalid Reeves. Avent, being a senior, he's fortunate because he's been in this type of situation. What he's going to have to do is really pick his spots defensively and make sure he doesn't pick up any cheap fouls. Well, the Big East played with six personal fouls during the regular season. Right, and that's an adjustment coming into the tournament for the coaches. De Hare, and that is a two-point basket. Well, De Hare had the great line when coming into the tournament. He said, it'll be so good to see another face after playing in the BC Big East all year. He's shown it with seven points. Arizona 21 to 17 and I'm sure that Arizona would like to get Anthony Avent to pick up his third foul if possible 
Billy mentioned certainly not going to be overly aggressive. Defensively, Williams misses. Aitman tips it. And in a race, Reeves had it last and lost it. So Seton Hall takes over with 7.39 to go. With 7.39 to go, and Arizona has not hit a jump shot yet. Everything they have scored has been within 10 feet of the basket. Someone's going to have to start shooting the ball from the perimeter to open up the inside for them. Optic has just two points on a layup and Reeves a free throw. That's all Arizona's guards have managed so far. Muehlbach has been shut out and he's on the bench with two fouls. As we said, the, the defense of the guards from Seton Hall, their guards are stronger. Have it. This is Williams. Taps it into the hands of Mills. Williams has been very active. The guy you talked about at the top of this game on both ends. And, and Mills was active early, but has not been in the offense. Sean Rooks. Gets inside, gets the basket in the foul, and if it's against Abent, that'll be three, and it is. Three on Anthony Abent, and that is a tough blow for B.J. Carlos. Here it is. He's behind Rooks on the low post. Doesn't move his feet quick enough. Rooks going up smart, smartly because he knew Abent had that second foul and trying to draw the third. He had scored seven points early and is their real key man off the board, but Arturis Karnishevis replaces Anthony Avent, and so Seton Hall right now behind the eight ball despite a two-point lead and Sean Rooks can make it one and he does with 7.01 to go we probably won't see Avent the rest of this first half uh, he, he's got to be concerned in, in right now the offensive end of the court he's going to have to spread the court a little bit more open it up maybe even use a little bit of the clock De Hare has got to step forward and the defensive boards you would think that now Arizona would have a big advantage inside. Karnishevis. Walker tips it in. There's a man they need with the physical Jerry presence. Walker. Jerry Walker with the second basket. Khalid Reed. In the hands of Walker. He has played more minutes than a couple of starters anyway coming in. And Caver goes in and is fouled. That will be the 16th foul against Arizona. No shot. The foul, the number Second three. foul on Reeves. There's the man who's worried about the floor, the opponent, and maybe this opponent here in Utah coming up next. More importantly, he's worried about his team. Not at all pleased with the performance against Georgetown last week. So. Terry DeHair misses a three, but there's Karnishevis with the follow-up. Now, this isn't something that should be happening to Arizona. That they're getting beaten. Now, the last two field goals have been on the offensive glass by, by Seton Hall. And with Avent on the bench and a five-point lead, the biggest so far for Seton Hall. We wind down to six minutes. Nearly another Arizona turnover. And it is a turnover as Brian Williams throws the ball away. And Billy, when Arizona doesn't get the ball inside, they really are helter-skelter and sloppy outside. Yeah, they're going to have to have a little more patience. As I said, that they're going to need somebody. One of the guards is going to have to step forward and prove to Seton Hall that they can hit the jump shot and beat them from the perimeter as well as the inside. Wayne Womack back in, replacing Chris Mills for Arizona. Carnivis hits a three. His second three-point basket of this first half. Seton Hall has opened up an eight-point lead with five and a half minutes to go in the first half. But Sean Rooks has come in to narrow it with a basket, and he was fouled as well. The story here is Anthony Avent has gone to the bench with three personal fouls for Seton Hall. And the Pirates have extended their lead. Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham here. Well, Sean Rooks is stepping forward in the post. That's where they, they haven't been able to get the ball into Brian Williams. And the man that's really disappeared the last several minutes for them is Chris Mills, who plays such an important part in Lute Lute Olsen's offense because he expects his three-man or small forward to be very involved, either making the play or scoring points. You saw Arturis Karnishevis on that foul on Rooks go to the bench, and he has three, and Asaf Barnea, the 6'8 freshman, replaces him. Seton Hall has the lead. They were down 8 to nothing to start this game. Walker, Barnea, up front, along with Winchester. Jahair and Caver, the guards for Seton Hall. And Jahair 
going away from the flow with nine points. It is the game high score. Now they're packing it in in the zone. One free, one zone because they're outman right now by Arizona. Now if they had Avan in there, they would play man to man. Play straight man to man. But I don't think these Seton Hall players know that they're out man right now no. here by Arizona because the way they're playing is they're just so focused out there and just playing good basketball. Gross. And Barney in his face, but the offensive rebound by Brian Williams. The basket is good in the foul. Brian Williams having a terrific first half has eight points. You know, it's tough defensively, even man-to-man -man against this Arizona front line. But when you go to the zone, it even becomes tougher because you don't have one man to look for to box out. And right there, Brian Williams gets to the offensive line. Jerry Walker with his first foul, and that is the 10th team foul against Seton Hall. So the Wildcats will be shooting two shots. Williams, who has four offensive rebounds. So far for Arizona now with nine. And the lead for Seton Hall cut to four. Barnea coming in, averaging under two points a game. They don't look for him for any kind of offense. And you see how Seton Hall is using a little bit of that clock. Barnea took two of any steps. That was only the fourth turnover by Seton Hall. Again, Seton Hall in that 1-3-1 one, one zone, trying to force, if anything, the perimeter jump shot from Arizona. Othick will give it to him. There's a three. And Matt Othick, who leads the team with 46 three-point baskets. And the first of the game brings the Wildcats to within one. A couple more of, that, of those shots, and that'll change the game plan for Carlissimo. First perimeter shot by Arizona, and trying to keep it in bounds, and doing so is Mulebach to Othick, and a great hustle play by Matt Mulebach. Well, that's why he was the defensive guard of the year in the Pac-10. Just great hustle, and he has really come out with fire in his eyes since the last time playing against the hair. Arizona on an eight to nothing run right now, has regained the lead, 31 to 30. The hair in a crowd. 11 points for the hair, and he looks like he's on another scoring tear in this game. <laughs> he's only a sophomore. Out of Jersey City, New Jersey. And there's a lob wow. pass to Williams from Muehlbach. Yeah, I didn't think that was long enough, but Brian Williams somehow was able to get his hands on that ball. 11 points and five boards for Brian Williams, who came in as the second leading scorer. The hair off balance. Under three minutes to play in the first half. The tempo has increased in the last three minutes. And becoming more physical. What happens is these teams are not very familiar with each other, and now they understand the game rules. And there's Brian Kaver with his first points of the game, and it's 34 to 33. Seton Hall. The pace has picked up. And there was a foul after the shot against Caber. Now watch Caber throw this elbow at Othic right there, and, he, and the official saw it and called the foul. They had just, moments ago, they just shook hands, so no hard feelings. Othic and Caber, and Othic will go to the line and shoot two shots. Returning to the game for Arizona is seven-foot center Ed Stokes, and Sean Rooks leads the game, having scored eight points. Now, I think 79% free throw shooter ties the game. I've been impressed with the half-court offense of both teams. They're executing well. They're making the right decisions with the basketball. Stokes gets the rebound, but it's deflected out of bounds, and it's still a Wildcats ball. So I think missed the second free throw, but Arizona so strong on the glass. We'll be back. He did not score a point in the first half, and he's he's a key player for this Seton Hall team. Here's Aben working up against Rooks. Double team, the rebound by Brian Williams. Out with the mule box. Seton Hall gets back on defense. Two minutes gone by in the second half. 
Pirates lead by a bucket. They go down to Rooks, and Avent blocks it. He took a chance there, didn't he? He sure did. But a block shot by Anthony Avent. Oliver Taylor trying to get untracked, and he hits his first points of the game. So we see these two teams, again, known for their defense, showing us a lot of offense. Shooting percentages were a lot higher than these teams showed in the regular season defensively. Muehlbach way out on top. They go low. Karnishevis. And you bet we'll be back to this game, but Arkansas is about to advance in the tournament, and so let's uh, listen in on the final few seconds of that ball game. And Arkansas will play for the regional title on Saturday. Well, Greg, when you talk to the Arkansas players, they don't just want to get back to the Final Four. They want to win it. They want to improve 15% every year. And for them to do that this year, they've got to win the championship, and they're on there. they got a chance to go here for the regional championship. Well, Arkansas has wrapped up a 93-70 win over Alabama. With Taylor and DeHair in the backboard, up front it's Walker, Avent, and Winchester. Low to Avent. With a short hook. And Winchester fights. Rebound, Stokes. There's another quick out. Arizona got away with a foul. Optic can't do anything. Taylor all over him. And here's Chris Mills with a two-point basket. So he has scored two baskets already early. So Mills trying to get going, and it's 45-43 Seton Hall. Well, these players now have a feeling for each other after that first half. Walker with a wild left-handed toss going up. Gets nothing. That's not what they're looking for from Walker. They're looking for a physical presence hitting the boards. just lost the ball. Avent gets it inside of the hair, and Avent gave it up at the right time. He should have given up even a little bit earlier, I think. P.J. Colissimo would have liked to have seen him give it to Taylor and let Taylor handle the basketball. 16 for Terry DeHair, who has averaged nearly 20 a game. And Brian Williams gets fouled. He was double teamed by Walker and Winchester. Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham here at Seattle as Seton Hall and Arizona battle for the right to get to the Western Regional Final. Seton Hall leading Arizona 47 to 43 with less than five minutes gone by in the second half. Well, top seed at Arkansas, romps over Alabama, they'll move to the Southeast Regional Final and Saturday will play the winner of Kansas, Indiana, which comes up next. Meanwhile, here at Seattle, Seton Hall leading 47-43. Sean Rooks back in the game. He's the more of the offensive threat inside. Anthony Avent defending it. Man-to-man -man defense. Muehlbach hits a three. Matt Muehlbach, who at 42% is the best percentage shooter from that range. And that's his first basket today. Well, we saw that the guard, DeHair, backed off him a little bit, trying to give a little help inside to Avent. Taylor is way short with that, but there's Winchester, gets banged inside, and they call him for traveling after four Arizona players surrounded him. Coming up next, Utah against UNLV in the west and Kansas and Indiana in the southeast. Well, the officials are letting them play inside, which is a plus for Seton Hall with Avent with those three fouls. Stokes and Rooks are both in. Both big centers. Chris Mills edges his way inside. He has scored six of his ten points already here in the second half. Well, he's just been more aggressive in this second half. The thing about it, though, is he going to be able to sustain it? In the first half, he came out strong, and he just faded in the latter part of the first half. With that lead, Arizona regains that basket. Arizona regains the lead. Avent misses. Here come the Wildcats. Matt Offick. Muehlbach finds a lane down the middle, passes to Stokes. Well-executed basket by Ed Stokes. 
Muehlbach finding the open man. He caught that seam and was able to create that opportunity. Arizona starts the last seven points of this game. Nearly six minutes have elapsed in the second half. Well, right now, see, Arizona is the more aggressive defensive team. Terry DeHair fouled and will shoot two. Now, here comes Muehlbach coming off that screen. Hey, Vince, ready to step out, afraid to pick up the fourth foul. Good dish off. Stokes makes a nice basket. Avent trying to defend. Personal foul is on Sean Rooks, his first, and Terry DeHair is on the line. DeHair at the line. He was not a starter, DeHair, until his senior year in high school. And the first Seton Hall sophomore to score 1,000 points. Well, he played with Walker at St. Anthony's. Couple of people from Jersey City, couple of New Yorkers, and some people from Lithuania and Israel. Khalid Reeves comes into the game for Arizona. And of course, you remember Andrew Gaze from Australia. P.J. Carlissimo has been able to attract a lot of players uh, with international skill. Well, you put it in a pot, stir it up, and you're in the final 16. The lead is one for Arizona. Reeves with the ball. Good balance for Arizona. That's what Lute Olsen's looking for scoring-wise. Three men in double figures with Offic with eight. Good patience offensively by Arizona. Not trying to force anything. Jerry Walker busting against Stokes. So what happens? Mills, Mills forces Mills. it and scores. <laughs> Four for four this half for Chris Mills, the leading scorer for Arizona at 15 a game. And now coming back are the Wildcats. And Winchester with a good steal and a two-on-one break. Taylor going in against Reeves. The basket would have counted had it gone. And Oliver Taylor will go to the line to shoot a pair. Well, he didn't make the right decision. He had Winchester wide open on the wing. Should have found him for the easy layup. Arizona foul number three. Khalid Reeves now with his third personal foul, third and he becomes the first Second Wildcat three to pick up three fouls. Ryan Williams and Wayne Womack. Number 21. Two front court Ryan men Williams. come back number for three, Arizona. Wayne and one of the game plans for Lute Olson is to try and wear down the front line of Seton Hall, Over being able to rotate his big men, playing five big men against, oh, well, in most cases, four big men for Seton Hall. Jerry Tarkani sitting with the opponent <laughs> right now. Is, is that something we should know about? <laughs> is there a trade of coaches? Yeah. <laughs> What does Rick Majerus feel about that? He's probably with the UNLV players. He's another question. <laughs> we'll be answered. Number 10. <laughs> Brian, we hope. Check Brian Caber will check in for Seton Hall. And going out is Oliver Taylor. Taylor was shaken up. Oliver Taylor grimacing a bit on the bench. Now, Arizona is starting to run a few different sets in this second half, things they didn't run the first half. Reeves goes up with Caver and a whistle. At the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select the Chevrolet players of the game, and in conjunction with the award, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of both schools. Call Brian Caver for a second personal foul. 13 foul against Seton Hall. Arizona's committed a couple. Muehlbach gets it in low to Rooks. Couple of tips. Williams is fouled. Brian Williams. He's been the most relentless offensive rebounder for Arizona tonight. Well, Anthony Avent has to just develop now a mentality. He's been able to dodge the bullet for well, over seven minutes now of the second half, not picking up his fourth half foul. He's got to become more aggressive. You just see he's playing a different game, and he's not being effective out there in the court, trying to protect himself. Hey, he's a senior. He might be just playing his last 12 minutes and 41 seconds. If you go out, go out strong. Good advice. Jerry Walker with his second personal foul. 
Zion Williams with 12 points and seven rebounds. Big disappointment last year, but boy, did he come on strong for Arizona, you mentioned after that year following the transfer from Maryland. Bielbach trying to smother De Hare. That's his main assignment. Haver into the hands of Walker. Scramble. And the possession arrow is going to favor Arizona on this tie-up. Well, Womack just grabbed Walker right around the neck and pulled him to the floor. And uh, we ended up with a jump ball. I said it was physical. Uh, here, we'll see it again. Ball's loose on the floor. Players going down on the floor for it. There's Walker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one, two, three. <laughs> Take down. Just about it. Foul trouble. Karnishevis on the sidelines with four. Those are the other players with three. Arizona has only one player with three fouls. As Matt Optic returns to the backcourt for Arizona, replacing Matt Muehlbach. Arizona leading by three. Nearly eight minutes remaining in the second half. Caver is staying with Reeves effectively. Reeves the first what half. he's got to do is he's got to give him a half a step and make sure, if anything, you force him to shoot the perimeter shot. Batted away. Loose ball. Reeves gets it back. But travel. It'll be Seton Hall's ball. And we'll take a break. Eleven fifty-two to go in the second half. Arizona leading fifty-four to fifty-one. Earlier, Arkansas, the number one seed, rolled into the Southeast Regional Finals by defeating Alabama ninety-three to seventy. Coming up next, Utah and UNLV here at Seattle in the other Western semifinal. Kansas and Indiana in the Southeast. This possession, I would think the ball is going into Anthony Avent. He needs to get himself going offensively. Winchester. With his seventh point, but they have been timely baskets, and it's a one-point game. Well, the reason I thought they'd go to Avent, he has not scored a basket or a point in this second half. He had seven at halftime, and also sat out the last seven minutes with foul trouble. Brian Williams now with 15 Brian points. Williams. Now, that last play, Seton Hall is trying to force him to go to his right, and he did that and showed his versatility. Jerry Walker runs into Rooks. Nothing doing. Seton Hall is shooting 36% from the field in the second half. Arizona still over 50. Muehlbach and Othick, the starting guards defending for Arizona. Spin move by DeHair, no basket. And an Arizona foul will be their third team foul, and it'll be the third on Matt Othick. So the starting Arizona point foul. guard has three, and the backup point guard, Khalid Reeves, also with three for Arizona. Uh, I'm sure Lute is concerned with it, but he still has two guards, and he has a few fouls to play with. Uh, but the hair, if Avent doesn't get it going, and it's the defense has a lot to do with it, well, he is getting it going, hitting a three-pointer. Second three-point basket for the hair. He's got 21 points and continues the sizzling scoring in this NCAA tournament. Sean Rook hesitated. Off the glass, and Arizona will be called for the foul inside. And that was on Brian Williams. Only his first foul for Brian Williams, who was the leading scorer for the Wildcats with 15. Brian Williams of Arizona. First personal, fourth team foul. So we're tied at 56 after Arizona had the lead throughout virtually the first 10 minutes of the second half. Avent hasn't done anything, as you said, offensively, playing with three fouls. There he goes. So Avent and DeHare, the two men. Oh, he made up his mind there. That's the most aggressive thing he's done uh, in this second half, and he's going to have to play that way defensively for Seton Hall. Came in averaging 18 points a game, second leading scorer for the Hall. Brooks. Help and Walker helping out from the weak side. Well, the key for Seton Hall in this second half is their ability to create turnovers. Seton Hall leading by two and with the ball, with under 10 minutes to play in the second half. Jerry Walker. Caber. And Caber with a 
good move. The freshman from Trenton, New Jersey, who's been a spark off the bench lately, gives Seton Hall a four-point advantage. Now it's Seton Hall's turn. Rooks. Sean Rooks. Sean Rooks. With 12. Look at the scoring for Arizona. 15 for Williams. 12 for Mills. 12 for Rooks. 8 for Othic. It's a game where no one has been able to take control of. Wild shot by DeHair. Avon on the board. Scores again. And that's something we haven't seen from Seton Hall in the second half. They were very effective. Both teams were in the first half getting to the offensive class. They have to look to go into Rooks. That's Arizona. Or go into Brian Williams. Here's Matt Hoffman. This is the shot, the rebound by Winchester. Very quietly, Gordon Winchester has done a lot of good things for Seton Hall. Uh, he's one of those players in this club that's asked to just, if he's going to get any offense, it's going to be on the offensive class, but he's got to compete at the defensive end of the court. He gets open, misses the slam. It was an easy layup on the pass from Amen, and Muehlbach goes the distance. He misses, but there's Chris Mills on the follow-up. Well, that's the second dunk in this game that Seton Hall has missed. Mills is five for five from the field here in the second half after a kind of a drought in the first half in which he scored only four points. Optic picking up the hair on the switch. Baseline, reverse lane, Winchester. Oh. Gordon Winchester from the Bronx, New York, and a junior. Well, the hair gets up in the air and still able to find the open man and Winchester the last time down misses a dunk and makes a move like that. A tight hard fought game between two teams anxious to get to the Western Regional Final. Mills hits the three point basket and there's a clock problem here. We have had the clock stuck on one of the clocks 807 the clock to our left has 807 to our right 740. Now, P.J. Colissimo is up there saying to the officials, hey, my players stopped playing when they heard the horn. Now the officials have to make a decision. Is that a good basket, which I would assume um, it will count, but, uh, you know, P.J. Colissimo has a good point. And Seton Hall should have 64 points. And Arizona, if that basket were to count as a three, would have 63. But let's sort it out as the clock did stop. Here's DeHair penetrating the lane, able to find Winchester on the wing, goes up. Rooks comes over, good defense, but Winchester just flips it up there. Interesting that none of the Arizona big men are in any kind of foul trouble. So if anyone can take a chance inside defensively, it would be the Wildcats. Yeah. 8.07, we understand, is the correct time. defense what we're going to see is Walker coming from the weak side helping out Avent and able to steal the ball away from Rooks that's something that Seton Hall has done a good job of in this second half and the UNLV running Rebels have come on to the arena and they are parading behind the scorers table you can see them there the defending national champs don't they look assured Billy huh they might look assured, but I'm sure Jerry Tarpini is very concerned on uh, is his team going to be ready to accept this challenge to repeat. And it's great that all of these players have the headset on look, listening to our broadcast. <laughs> I'm sure they're listening to us. <laughs> could you hum the music, the tunes that they're listening to? Uh, I doubt it. <laughs> Neither could I. Right now, let's go to Leslie Visser, see if she knows what's going on better than we do. Leslie? Dick, it's still a little complicated over here. They're saying that 740 is the correct time. The last basket counted that it was a three-point shot and that the mistake was made that they shouldn't have blown the horn unless it was a dead ball. I'll uh, keep you posted. Thank you. So, so they've gone back to 807. The basket counted by Mills. And they should not have sounded the horn. So what's PJ's argument now? 
I, the only thing I can think of that he's talking to the official about is the horn going off and the three-point shot. That he's, he's saying that, you know, I think our players, they stop playing. Well, what you're told as a player is you're supposed to just play the whistle. But, you know, these are young kids out there, and they hear a horn, and the clock is moving right there, 8.07. Now, it looks like Winchester, he's a little confused. The horn went off, and he didn't come out aggressively against Chris Mills. Leslie? Dick, they're saying, P.J. Carlismo is complaining that it was 8.07 when they scored, so it's got to be at least 30 seconds fewer than when they scored. They're also saying that uh, the mistake was that you play the whistle, not the horn. Dick? All right, Leslie, well... The officials want to look at this, and this is one of the times that they can look at this replay. So it's stuck here at 8.07. Yeah. Now the horn goes off here. Winchester is just, uh, should I go play him, or is it stop? And as Leslie said, and we talked about, the whistle. You play the whistle. The only time a horn comes into play is at the end of the game. To decide the end of the game. Not the clock, but the horn, but not during the game. to tell the viewers for the areas of interest that the Kansas Indiana game will be starting uh, well I guess in about seven or eight minutes from now and you will see the game from the beginning of course Utah and UNLV come up next after this game 64 63 is the score so it's 46 minutes after the hour at 9 46 is the time. Now this set right here, they're looking for the post up for Avent, looking for DeHair for the jumper. DeHair for the jumper. Long rebound into the hands of Khalid Reeves. Wide open was Othic, looking for the ball, yelling for the ball, and Othic hits a three. His second of the game. Arizona by two now. Well, Reeves pushing the ball, forcing the defense to react, finding out the just good decision making by the freshman. The hair. Winchester goes up. Does a delay like we just had because of the clock affect either one of these teams, Bill? No, I don't think at all. I, I don't think it bothers either, either one of the ball clubs. Ed Stokes committing the foul. Second personal, five team five. And we're going to have a timeout. PJ doesn't look really happy right now. We have a timeout on the floor. 13. 13. 7.28 remaining in the second half, and Arizona leading Seton Hall, 66 to 64. De Hare with 21 leading Seton Hall, and Mills with 17 is the top scorer for Arizona. And Mills fouls Anthony Avon, and a good foul to prevent a possible three-point situation. The surprising thing, so far in this game, out-of-bounds play, Arizona has been in their zone defense. That time, they went straight man-to-man -man and able to pick up the, the two-shot foul. Avon is on the line, a 76% free-throw shooter. Twelve points for Avent. Turnovers virtually even now. Rebounding. Seton all has the edge. Bit of a surprise considering Arizona's strength there and the leading scorer. Well, Chris Mills has really stepped forward for Arizona in this second half. Walker gets the offensive rebound. Try to get it to Avent. Too much of a crowd. Arizona by one, and they have the ball. And there's Reeves missing a three, and Walker. Walker has been terrific off the bench for Seton Hall. Well, he's brought what P.J. wants, a physical presence. He gets in trouble, though, when he starts trying to do anything with the basketball. That was a walk. Avent has it blocked by Stokes. Reeves trying to split the middle. Into the hands of Caver. Lead to Winchester. Gordon Winchester puts Seton Hall up. Reeves penetrated too far to the basket. Any guard going that close to the basket should take it to it, not look to pass the ball off. This has really not been a game of momentum for either team once the eight-point advantages went by the boards in the first half. Yep, we've seen spurts by both teams in this second half all throughout the game. Stokes, there was the weak side help. Womack on the other side. 
Wayne Womack. Junior from Pasadena. Back and forth they go now. Arizona with the one-point lead. Terrific game here in the Kingdom. First half of the doubleheader in the Western Regional and uh, mini Final Four, they're calling it. De Hair gets fouled by Reeves, and that'll be four on Khalid. Foul number three, Khalid Reeves. Fourth personal foul. Seven team foul. Substitutions for both teams. Number 55, Fernando Williams. For Back in along with Muehlbach for Arizona. Arizona. Number 21, Williams. And number Reed with four fouls goes out. De Hare shooting. And it's the seventh team foul. One and one for Terry De Hare. Uh, the, the big advantage for Lute Olsen is Reeves going out. He still has the brings Oxford in the game who's been playing exceptional basketball today. Has a few three-pointers and has 11 points. Tied at 68. The hair with 22 points. The game's high score. Pirates by a point. The big story, though, in this second half is Anthony Avent has not picked up his fourth foul. So maybe he can play a little more aggressively defensively. Uh, he, he better be playing more aggressively. We just over six minutes, under six minutes to play. But Karnishevis has four fouls, and he's in there playing against Brian Williams. Picking up Yulbach on the switch. Awesome. This is a three, but there's Brian Williams. He's been there all night to get the point on the putback, and he's got 17. He is overpowering Karnishevis when the ball goes up on the glass. And the hair, and it's saved by Avent. Great play by Avent. Saving the turnover. You know, people are moaning right now that Winchester didn't take that shot. That's not what he's asked to do. He's going to score points off the offensive stop, stop glass way. or the stop. penetration of the guards. And we'll have a Seton Hall foul away from the ball. And that will be on De Hair, only his first. Team hey. foul four. We assure you, you're not going to miss Arizona any of this action. Keep your eye on Seton Hall, Arizona. And on the bottom of your screen, as you look at Bobby Knight, Put the other eye on the tip-off of Kansas and Indiana. Now, which as team CBS Sports brings you basketball defense. from all over the country. Optic trying to get free. And as that game is now tipped off, you will see some of that game after this one. Let's go back to the action. Brian Williams. Rebound by De Hare. Seton Hall looking to regain the lead. Well, De Hare has done everything for this ball club. He has eight rebounds um, so far in this ball game, playing at the guard position. Plus the leading scorer with 23. There's De Hare. Gets the ball back and hits from the corner. Great. Acrobatic. Does he have a shooter's mentality? Oh, you, you defended that one? Yeah, I'm going to come back and give you another one. We've had 13 lead changes in this game. Under four minutes to play. Inside out. Chris Mills hits a three. Coming right back for Arizona. And that's what we didn't see in the first half from this Arizona ball club. We saw a team that was just trying to overpower it inside. Now they're showing us another dimension. Inside to Anthony Avent, and he is fouled by Stokes. Talking about Mills, he is seven for seven from the field in the second half, and how he has a woke. Well, number 41. Lute Olson no. said we were no. asking him about how he thought he would perform today. He said Chris Mills is a big game player, and he's proven Lute Olson correct. Offit goes out, and Khalid Reeves comes back. You know he's playing with four fouls, and Anthony Avent on the free throw line. 18 fouls on Arizona. Two for four from the line tonight. Sean Rooks replaces Stokes for Arizona. Stokes goes out with three persons. Anthony Avent at the line. Four 
This game comes down to who digs it in defensively. Anything else? Defensively, the other team that's yeah, going to win it is going to have to execute offensively. Men. On the court now, and a one-point lead for Arizona. Muehlbach and Reeves are in the backcourt. Mills, Williams, and Rooks up front. For Seton Hall, Haver and DeHair. At guard and Karnishevis, Amen. Seton Hall going to full court defensive pressure. And Walker and Reeves nearly lost it. Karnishevis with four fouls playing for Seton Hall. Reeves has four for Arizona. And what Lou Olson has on the court right now is his best offensive ball club. Uh, Williams has a tip. Great defensive play by Walker. Now Karnishevis. Seton Hall's trademark defense. Now offensively for Seton Hall, they're going to look to go to Avent or obviously the man so far tonight, DeHair. Wilbach's trying to prevent that. There's Avent off the glass. Anthony Avent with 15 points. Anthony Still playing Avent. with three fouls. So Seton Hall has gotten to this point with their big, big, big man in foul trouble. Williams fights his way in. And a collision. And the foul will be called against the Wildcats and will be shooting. You, you know, I love what the officials well, are doing out here tonight. They're Six letting two. the kids decide who should move on uh, in this one. tournament. They've done a great job. They, they really have. They're letting them play basketball, and the kids are just playing good, hard-nosed basketball. We haven't seen any cheap shots. Reeves and Othic exchange. Othic coming in. Rooks goes out and Stokes into the game. Here is Terry DeHair with 25 points. Now in the three games of the tournament, he has scored 26, 28, and 25 and still going. Now with the substitution made by Ludos, you have to look at he has his better defensive ball club on the court now. But at the offensive end of the court, Chris Mills is going to handle the basketball. They're going to have to go through him, either to shoot the ball or go and create something. The hair is nine for nine from the free throw line at Seton Hall up by three. <laughs> Spreading the court. And they're going to call Jerry Walker. That'll be the 16th foul against Seton Hall. So they're not yet in the bonus. Kansas shocking Indiana off to a quick 16 to 4 lead yeah, down in Charlotte. Third personal, 16 uh, Indiana five. struggled early against Coastal Carolina as well, but came back in that second half and just played flawless basketball. Florida State too fell behind. Hey, this game right here was a, you know, we saw an 8 nothing run to start the ball game. Bill gets it low to Williams in a slapping foul. Seton Hall, and that will be the seventh team foul in Arizona now. In the bonus, will be shooting one and one. As Brian, or that's Jerry Walker, now picking up his fourth foul. Walker and Karnishevis, both on the court with four fouls for Seton Hall. Williams is 66% free throw shooter. He is by no means the best free throw shooter on the Wildcats. On the three for three tonight. And one. 17 points and a big game for Brian Williams. Now with 18, Mills leads with 20. But Williams' big contribution has been off the boards with six offensive rebounds. One thing I'm a little surprised about, P.J. Colissimo having Taylor sitting there over on the bench because down the stretch of this season in the Big East, hitting some key baskets to win the ball game, he's going with a younger player out there. Taver is a freshman, Taylor is a senior, so he is not going with experience as a point guard. Here, penetrating the wall, and it's dropped in a foul against Stokes. And the Arizona bench up in arms over that one. You just have to love 
the way these kids are competing against each other. But the individual effort that we're going to see by De Hair here, they spread the court, a 1-4, and they look for him to penetrate. He finds it. When Williams has to help out, there's the foul. Walker going to the line as a 66% free throw shooter. That was the fourth foul on Stokes. Seton Hall leading by one. Lude Olsen trying to inch closer and would relish another shot at UNLV. If UNLV can beat Utah and if he can win this game. Two minutes remaining in the 77-75 Seton Hall lead. Stokes over Walker. Rebound by the freshman Brian Caber. That's not the man Arizona wants shooting the basketball down there. They want it in Ryan Williams' hands or Chris Mills. They're using the clock now, Seton Hall. Arizona trapping. Eventually, the ball will end up in the Hare's hands in a 1-4 set, looking to go to the basket or to create something. We have 15 seconds on the 45-second clock. Here's the 1-4. Now Kaver. Karnishevis. And it'll be Arizona ball. No foul. Karnishevis comes up limping, as does Brian Williams. And they just lost it out of bounds, and Williams is that's having problems. That surprised me, the play that was run. I thought the ball would go into DeHare's hands, but what they do is they run. Karnishevis, ooh, that's, uh, it's either a block or a charge, but it's surely, a no, it's got to be something called. It's not a no call. That would have been the fifth foul on Karnishevis if they had called the offensive foul. So he stays in the game. There's the timeout story and the foul. Under a minute to go and Seton Hall by one. was looking the other way and Mills recovers nicely for Arizona. Would have been disaster for the Wildcats. Here's Rooks. Walker turns it over to Seton Hall and Seton Hall can run out the clock. They won't of course. Yeah, the reason for that was the weak side help. Rooks thought he had an open lane to the basket. The defensive man came over, caught him off guard, created the turnover. Now the senior Oliver Taylor has come in the game. So three guards are in for Seton Hall, Taylor, Caver, and DeHare for ball handling purposes and 41 and a half seconds remain. Both teams have their timeouts left. You would expect our Arizona to look to go for the steal. If they don't get it, then they have to decide who are they going to foul. Reeves has replaced Optic. Taylor gets out of trouble and finally gets fouled. He was scrunched in a big vice, and finally a foul is called, and he'll get to the line and shoot one and one. And he's a pretty good free throw shooter. Yeah, he's shooting 77% from the foul line, but, but he's been sitting there over there on the bench. Uh, he has not been involved in the offense the way he has been recently, only scoring four points. So, a tough situation for Mr. Taylor. Foul was on Mulebach, his third, and Taylor, earlier in the game, was two for two from the line. Timeout with 37 plus remaining and a two point Seton Hall lead. And our Chevrolet players of the game, Terry DeHair of Seton Hall, leading scorer right now with 27, and Chris Mills. Great second half for Arizona right now, he has 20. So Oliver Taylor going to the free throw line. He was the MVP in the Big East tournament. He had the winning basket against Pitt and Villanova. To send Seton Hall to the Big East Championship ultimate. I know those were big games, but this is even bigger. All net. This is the big one for Seton Hall. A free throw here would give them a four-point lead. Now, 
if he makes it if, or misses it, Arizona's got to look to push the ball down the court. Look for either the, the inside play or they might look for the three-point shot. I think they'll look to push it quickly, look inside to Rooks or to Williams. They have timeouts remaining. Two timeouts left for Arizona. Here is Williams, short with it, gets his own rebound. Slams it through and a timeout called by Arizona. And Seton Hall's lead cut to two on a resounding thumping dunk. Arizona takes timeout. Now Seton Hall leads by two with 21.7 seconds remaining. Arizona has only one timeout. If Arizona were to foul, it would be two shots for Seton Hall. Right now, we'll see full court defensive pressure. Arizona has their three guards in. They'll look for the steal. If not, they'll have to take a foul. Of course, Seton Hall is going to try and move the ball and not allow them to foul. Kaver tried to get rid of it before the foul and could not. And so the freshman from Trenton, New Jersey, who's been extremely poisoned. Four fouls on Matt Muehlbach. There's Jerry Walker. Gaber, 76% shooter. His first free throws tonight. And standing on that line, knowing that you have two shots is a lot easier than knowing that you have a one-on-one, -on -one, that you have to make that first one, especially for a freshman. Arizona's got to get in, in, push it up the court. If they have the good open shot, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run some form of a pick and roll out near the three-point line or the jump shot there or looking inside to one of their people. Missed the second free throw, so Arizona can tie with a three. They have one timeout left. Matt Offick, picked up by Walker. Swarming defense by Seton Hall with less than 10 seconds to go. Offick for three, fires. The rebound and a foul against Matt Muehlbach. And that could seal it for Seton Hall. And Muehlbach's fouled out of the game. Pick and roll. The key was they switched. Walker stepped out, took Othic, did not allow him to come off for that open jump shot. In the last 19 minutes of this game, neither team has led by more than four. Seton Hall can first the free throw, they'll be up by five. Now there's the jump shot from the corner, comes up short. Here's that young man, the MVP tonight, the hair on the on the defensive boards. And Bill, he'll go to the line, having shot nine for nine from the free throw line, 27 points in another phenomenal effort in this NCAA tournament. When you look at Arizona, of course this isn't over yet, but you're looking at a team that has one senior that we've watched tonight, Yulebox. So you're going to be seeing this team back in this situation for the next few years. Yulebox foul out. That could end a superb career for him. Native of Stillwell, Kansas, at the hair. Misses this one, but it's still a four-point lead. Not much time. Optic fires it up, and Seton Hall advances to the Western Regional Final. Thank you very much. So Seton Hall advances next up for them, the winner of UNLV Utah. Next up for you is Kansas and Indiana. 